In this section, we're going to discuss navigation within the shell framework. The key components for shell navigation are flyouts and tabs. Let's begin by creating a new project. Of course, that's a mobile project. We'll give it a name. We'll call it flyouts and we'll set where we want to put that code. Once we have the name and the location, we're ready to go. Let's choose Shell as we have in the past. Let's close up the head projects, focus on the main project, and let's go to appshell.xaml. There's quite a bit here already to set you up with tabs. Flyouts are very easy, and we'll see how you can turn tabs into flyouts. Let's begin by removing all of the comments. These comments show you how you can set up your own layout. We're going to use the default layout. And we'll go up and take out the resources, which are for colors in your shell application. This will simplify what we're doing. And we can see that there's a tab bar within that two tabs. Let's run it and see what that gets us. The application comes up. Here's our Browse page. And notice on the bottom there are two tabs, Browse and About. If we click About, we go to the About page. Click Browse, we go back to the Browse page. And for small applications, tabs like this may be all you need. But for most applications, you're going to want flyouts, often called a hamburger menu. Let's see how we can turn this into flyouts. The first thing we're going to do is remove the tab bar and the tabs. And that will leave us with the shell content objects. And we're going to add a flyout item, give that flyout item a title, and we'll surround our first shell content with that flyout item. Let's do the same thing for the about page. Get rid of that tab bar and tab that we had left over. Create a new flyout item, this time with a title of about page. And we're all set with two flyout items. That's all it takes to create flyout items, at least your basic flyout item. Let's run that, bring up the emulator. We go to the browse page, but notice there's now a hamburger menu. Click on the hamburger, and out comes our flyout with browse and about. And we can use that to navigate between the two pages. Just a couple lines of XAML, and we've got that up and running. We'd like to do a little bit more with flyouts. The first thing that we're going to do is create the shell flyout header. This will go above your flyout menu and can be as complex as any other content. You can put a grid here, stack layouts. I'm just going to put a label. You can certainly put an icon. I'm just going to use text. I'll set that text to be pretty big with the color red, and the text will say flyout header. When we run the application, we come back to the browse page. When we open the menu, there we see the flyout header that we just created. And often you'll put an icon in here or some form of identification, often corporate identification. Let's change the color from red, which is a little jarring, to white. We'll stop the application and run it again. You often can get hot reload, but some parts of Shell are a little persnickety about it, at least for now. And there's our new header. Let's click the About. It takes us to the About page, so we know that that is still working. Next, we're going to add a couple of views. Let's go into the New Item menu. And what we want is a content page. Let's call our first content page dog. And when dog comes up, we're going to display welcome to dog. Let's set the font size fairly large for that. Save that. And we're now going to create another item. This time we'll create cat. And once again, we'll go to the label that we get by default. We'll change the text to say cat page, and we'll set the font size to 60 here again. 
and this time we'll set the text color to blue. Let's also put in a title header in this page. So we'll call this cat, and let's go back to dog and put a title in there as well. And of course, the title here will be dog. Now that we have a couple more pages, we may want them to appear in the flyout menu. And that's pretty easy to do. Let's give ourselves a little bit of room here and copy one of these and create a new flyout item, but take the title out and set it to go to the dog page and run it. Now you remember we took the title out of the flyout item, but we added a title to the dog page. However, it doesn't show up in the flyout item without that title. So let's stop, go back to the flyout item for dog, and add a title here, which will be the title that will show in the flyout menu itself. Let's bring that back up. And when we go to the flyout menu, sure enough, we see dog. Click on it, and that takes us to the dog page. And the title here is the title on the top of the page. Stop the application. Now, there is a shorthand here that you can use, which is just putting the namespace and the name of the page. Xamarin will determine that that must be surrounded by a flyout item and will create it for you. So this is far simpler. We'll do that with the cat page. We'll go to the flyout menu, and sure enough, cat is there. First class citizen, if you click on it, it, takes you to the cat page. So depending on readability and how you like to lay this out, you can use this shorthand when you're doing a simple flyout item. Let's create a couple more items to work with. The first will be monkey. Create a monkey page. Can't have a Xamarin application without a monkey page. And once again, we'll update the text, the font size, the text color, which we will set to green. And let's set the font size once again to 60. That's our monkey. One more item. Let's call this one gorilla, a relative of the monkey. And we will go in and once again change the text to indicate what page we're on. So we're on the gorilla page. We'll set the font size and we're all set. Now that we have a monkey and a gorilla, let's go back to appshell.xaml and we'll create flyout items for those two items. Now you can create a group of flyout items by using the flyout display option, which we're going to set to the enumerated constant as multiple items. Let's copy and paste one of these shell contents and put it in twice. And we're going to set one of them to monkey and we'll set the second one to gorilla. Now notice they are grouped together. We're going to set a title for each of them. And now let's take a look and how that grouping appears in the flyout itself. Let's run the application again, open up the menu, and you can see monkey and gorilla are now set off with the horizontal lines. But of course, they work just like the others. We click on gorilla, we go to the gorilla page. At the bottom, we have two buttons, monkey and gorilla, and that's because we set them as a group. You can see that if I click on monkey, I get monkey lit up, but I can go to the gorilla page from those tabs on the bottom. Let's stop and take a look at what else can go in here. And that's a menu item. Menu items are somewhat different from flyouts. They appear in the flyout menu, but they are typically used to take an action with a clicked handler or a command. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use a clicked handler somewhat simpler than getting ourselves into view models and so forth. But for MVVM purposes, you would use a command here. Go to the code behind where our menu item clicked handler was created for us. The first thing we want to do is close the flyout. So we say flyout is presented equal false. 
That's a programmatic way to close the flyout. You could, of course, say equals true, and that would open the flyout. The second thing we're going to do is display a simple dialog that will indicate that the menu item was clicked. Let's go back and run that. Go back to our flyout menu and notice that show dialog. The menu item is there. We click on it. It closes the flyout and brings up the dialog. Let's go back to the gorilla page. And on the gorilla page, we're going to add a button. And we're going to use this button for navigation. We'll set the text gorilla details and we'll give it a clicked handler as well. Now, gorilla details. First of all, it doesn't exist, so let's create it. So we'll make a new item called Gorilla Details. And here, of course, you might put images and text about a gorilla. We'll just put in a marker for ourselves, set a somewhat smaller font size, and set the text color. Now that we have a Gorilla Detail page, the question is, how do we get to it? So far, we've been getting to all our pages through the flyout menu. We'd like to get to this page from the Gorilla page. Let's go back to appshell.xaml.cs, the code behind for appshell.xaml. And here we're going to create a second method. This method you'll find in virtually every flyout because it is the way that we get from items on the flyout to items that are not defined in the flyout. First thing we're going to do is create a dictionary. That'll be a dictionary of string and type, which we'll call routes. Now let's create a method called register routes. And in here, you're going to register all the pages that are not on your flyouts. We'll just have one, which is Gorilla Details. So we add that string, and then we add the type of the page that we created for that, which is Gorilla Details. We could, of course, have many items in the register routes. Let's add the using statement that we need. After we've added as many routes as we want to our dictionary, we're going to iterate through that dictionary using a for each loop. And we're going to add each item from that dictionary into routing's register route method. We want to add the key from the route and the value from the route for each route that we've defined. We can now return to the clicked event handler in our gorilla class, and we want to tell it to go to the gorilla details page. We want to use a wait, so let's make that event handler async. And now we're going to use the shell, and we get that by saying shell.current, and that will let us call go to async or the path to the Gorilla Details. Here the path is very simple. It's right off the Gorilla page. Let's run that and navigate to the Gorilla page. And on the Gorilla page, we'll click Go to Details. And sure enough, it takes us to the Details page. 